Hello, I'm the Media Wiz, because one art form wasn't enough. With another request from my buddy, the Nostalgia Kid. Hello, everyone. I'm the Nostalgia Kid. Let's talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic was the big hit Sega was looking for in the 90s. With his first three games on the Genesis, Sonic grew to popularity levels of Mario. But as I've mentioned before in other reviews, Sonic has had major speed bumps along the way with some bad games. He eventually made a bounce back with some good games, but for every Sonic 4, Sonic Colors, and Sonic Generations, there's a Sonic 06, Sonic Secret of the Rings, and Sonic Boom. Today, we'll be looking at Sonic Zero Gravity for the Wii. Sonic had a couple racing games before this, tend to be exact. I barely remember the original Sonic Free Riders, but I remember it receiving mixed reviews. Same can be said for this one. Some reviews have praised it for good graphics, larger level scope, music, and gameplay. But it's also been criticized for loose control mechanics and unnecessary changes to the first one. Now, with this review, we're going to be looking at the gameplay and the story mode separately, okay? Okay. This is Sonic Riders Zero Gravity. Okay, so here's the first race track at Megalo Station. Location looks pretty cool. The graphics look mm, slightly better than the first one. I know this is kind of a weird reference, but this game kind of reminds me of Kirby Air Rider. Maybe it's just me. Anyway, this is the reason the game is called Zero Gravity. There are sections of the game where you can activate Zero Gravity and shoot across the track. It's both cool and nauseating. While it is cool to go at least for speed, part of me feels a little nauseous, like you're on a really fast Universal ride. As you can tell, this is the basic racing setting. As for the controls, you turn the Wii mode sideways and use the D-pad. Push the up button to go straight, and sometimes push left if you need to make a turn. Pretty standard stuff. I have to say though, the more you push down on the up button, it really begins to hurt your thumb. Also, when I started playing, there was this one turn that gets really irritating because you can barely dodge it. Even if you go really slow and against the left of the screen, you'll still find a way to crash into at least one of the cars in this corner. The real way to get past this turn is to go down this tunnel and avoid the turn entirely. So mixed with an annoying turn, pain in your thumb, and trying to stay ahead makes for a very frustrating time. But thankfully we can play as seven different characters, so let's see how each one of them operate. With Sonic you can just go really fast, and whenever you activate zero gravity you can turn into a ball and speed ahead, which is kind of cool. When you go zero gravity as Knuckles, you can go really fast, which is kind of funny seeing Knuckles in this pose. It reminds me of Game Grumps. Dude, come and get me, man! Come on, me, bro! Fucking fight me, dude! Bro. As for Amy, when she goes zero gravity, she goes really fast and hits people with her hammer! Damn. Out of all the four original characters, I think Tails is the best out of all of them. Hell, I think he goes faster than Sonic when he goes into zero gravity. He easily has better maneuvers, too. As for the Babylon Rogues... Jet is pretty good. As good as Tails, actually. You can even face through cars when you go into zero gravity as him. Also, I love the damage sound they gave to him. What? <laughs> That's a great landing. Everyone else was like, oh, or no word. <laughs> His is just, what? As for Storm, he's not that good. I think they tried to give him weight physics, which is a pretty good minor thing, but he's incredibly slow to control, even when he does go into zero gravity mode. And lastly, we get to Wave, and she's actually pretty cool to play as too. She has a similar trait to Amy in that when you go into zero gravity mode, you can hit people with a weapon. In this case, a wrench. Oh, wow. I also unintentionally kept hitting Jet, the leader of the group that Wave belongs to. That is funny. Well, now that we've looked at the gameplay, I think it'll be appropriate if we go back and look at the story. It begins with a meteor landing to Mobius. Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles find a metal stone, which looks like a ring. The rogues find one too, but they find it in these ancient ruins. Sonic and friends get chased by these evil robots, and you think Sonic's about to fall to his death until he activates zero gravity with the stone. Ooh, starting to see what some of the critics meant when they meant the graphics. I mean, it's jarring to go from that first cutscene to this, but it's not as bad as... Yeah. Yeah, that one. Anyway, the gang comes across the rogues at the company building for Meteor Tech, the company that builds the robots. Of course, Sonic and Jet turn it into a dick measuring contest. Ha! I'm the fastest thing in the universe, and today, I'm gonna prove it! Ha! 
gonna take a shot in the dark here, but I'm gonna guess that Eggman is somehow involved in all this. Do I look like a ball to you? Eggman, what are you doing here? Who would have guessed? Eggman explains what's going on with the robots. When the Metal Stone was activated, it also activated our main villain, SCRHD. Also, Amy and Storm get left behind. <laughs> Amy forces Storm to take her to Sonic and crew, but they get attacked by a robot, which explodes as soon as it scans the stone. Storm then finds another stone inside the robot and runs off to tell Jet. Wait, I remember Storm saying something weird about the thing he took from that robot matching something they found someplace else. Well, oh, where was it he said? Ge Giga something like that. Wait, Gigan! The Gigan rocks! You mean they actually named an island after a Godzilla character in a Sonic game? I mean, okay, yeah, they pronounce it Gigan instead of Gigan, but it's spelled the same way. You're late! But I brought back something good! Huh. Not bad, Storm. Not bad. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm starting to find the rogues more and more entertaining. Sonic and friends find the ruins, learn about the backstory of the stones, and you guessed it, Jet and Eggman are off to try and find the remaining stones. I don't know how to feel right now. I mean, the story is good, but it feels a little out there for a Sonic game. Eh, at least it's not... Yeah, that, that game. The groups meet up at this Crimson Tower place. We find out that Eggman was really behind it all along. What a twist! Here! Hey! We haven't settled anything yet! See you at the World Grand Prix! In Mario vs. Sonic at the Olympic Games, bitch! But with all the stones brought together, SCRHD's final form is unleashed and the apocalypse is nigh. The robots destroyed, the Babylon Garden is restored, everyone is now friends, and it's revealed that the Babylons are evolved from aliens. But the people of Babylon... I can't believe they were the descendants of aliens! They crash-landed on this planet in the ancient past. Alright. So that was Sonic Riders Zero Gravity, and... it's mediocre. The graphics aren't the best, but they're not awful, especially in the cutscenes. The gameplay is pretty standard, even if it's weak in certain areas. The story is larger than life, even if it is cliche or just plain out there sometimes. Easily, the best thing in this game was the music, which is surprising. I still consider this one of the weaker Sonic games, but... it's not as bad as Sonic 06. Yeah. By the way, if you want me to review this game, here's the review. This game sucks ass. I'm the media whiz, because one art form wasn't enough.